Hey, what a time to be alive. And this is uh, probably going to be very racist. Bonus. 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 Well, Welcome. yeah, it's bonus. Welcome what to the, the the third installment of uh, our our this month's bonus episodes, which is in the theme. I don't know if our guest knows this. The theme is Better Show Month, where we have people on from better shows than our own. <laughs> uh, it's worked out. It's, it's very good. We got some pretty. We got a you know we got the Stefan Heck. We got the Jesse Farrar. And this week we have wonderful comedian and co-host of the My Favorite Murder podcast, Karen Kilgariff is here, everybody. Oh, hi, everybody. I thought you meant make your own show better with that bonus episode. Yes, that's like, also that's what also we try true. to do. That's also true. Like yeah. being thing on yourselves while you podcast, which yeah. is also <laughs> It's not even Patreon related. We just have an, we, we just panic every time we record an episode. We're like, we better do another one. Just, I don't feel like people are going to like that. Um, better. Quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do it again, but funnier, please. Yeah, we can't. We can't do promotion without taking a dig at ourselves. That's that's how good we are at promotion. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh man, I, I, that is like very much the theme of this podcast. Is every time we try to plug something, we're always like, I guess do that if you want. It's, yeah. We're really not good at it. It's, uh, yeah. I feel like for stand-up comics, it's very demeaning to uh, shill stuff. It, I feel like it's at least for me in the '90s. That was very mm-hmm. sellouty behavior. You never wanted to be a sellout because yeah. Kurt Cobain might hear about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, telling people like, "Here's the mattress you have to buy," feels like you're a bad artist. Yeah, right? I That's, feel like we've only ever done one ad uh, on this. Well, we did several, but we only had one sponsor, which was Blue Chew. We had Blue Chew ads mm-hmm. for like three weeks. Uh, yeah, which I feel like that like. I think because it was something so dumb, it almost felt less sellouty to me than if we were selling something like meaningful. But yeah, I don't know. In some ways, it's also worse. So. And they didn't sell it. Send us copies, so we at least got to be. Yeah, it's a company yeah, with a sense of humor. They they're aware, you know, which is good. As opposed to yeah, if we were selling something seriously, it's like t- you should totally buy uh, these uh, kitchen items that we also use. They're very yeah. good and fully endorsed. Do you, is you <laughs> a uh, Viagra ripoff? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nice. There was a massive yeah. Viagra's like patent expired, and then all of a sudden there were four billion, you know, cheap versions of Viagra. Yeah, sure. Um, sure they were great. Yeah, I feel like also me and me and Patty's voice both sound kind of naturally. Like even if we were selling something earnestly, it would sound like we were being making fun of it. But like check it out. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's really good. I think it's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm having that, a good time <laughs> selling this like, product disease that some comics have where it's like they can never MC because they can't do the comedy club announcements because it <laughs> only sounds like they're ridiculing them. Oh, yeah. I know that disease. It's called arrogance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come back good. next week. <laughs> well, a lot of times if it's smaller comedy clubs, too, you it, it's hard to do it because it would be like, hey, you know, thanks for coming out to see my show. Um, now, if you're a fan of my comedy, I'm sure you'll like Wild Joe. <laughs> Who's here next week? He's gonna spike his hair up on stage, and uh, I, I love like, when it's like a hypnotist or like a magician, and you have to do those. Those are always really good. Yeah, Wait, I, like if you like this, check out this corporate retreat bullshit yeah. that no one enjoys. <laughs> Kath, you're from Austin, right? Yeah, I started there. Started in Austin because mm-hmm. I was I was in I think it was Houston last stop one time, and I met a guy that was a balloon comic. And he- <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Like it was, I was headlining, it was this very bizarre week. It was one of the only times I ever headlined a club by myself. It was horrifying and I was not good. But <laughs> there was all these comics, obviously local comics that would hang out in the bar afterwards. And a lot of them were like pissed that I was headlining what is the usual shit. And there was this <laughs> one kind of aggro guy and he was like, yeah, so how long have you been doing this? It was like a lot of those kind of questions. And so I started asking him questions. He's like, yeah, I'm a balloon comic. I've been doing it for a while. And I thought he was joking. And I, of course, like, I was like, oh, my God, I love this guy. He's great. And he was not joking. <laughs> he, did, he was, like, there to let me know that he was the balloon comic. And he wasn't sure if I was funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're awesome. not going to get the balloon endorsement right off. We'll no, check out here. He's a tough customer. But imagine rank on you as the imagine how, comic. how devastating that would have been if you were halfway through your set and you see the balloon comic walk out. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> 
I got <laughs> stuff. I'm pulling a huge balloon out of my bag. No, yeah. this one's for you. He picks like up his a, backpack and it's just squeaking. It's just full of balloons. <laughs> like, oh god! He's like a he's like a balloon Bill Burr. He can play the alt balloon rooms, yeah. the black yeah. balloon rooms. Not everyone can do those things, you know. Yeah. I'm just imagining he heckles by like letting a balloon go in the middle of your <laughs> set. Or like speaking, just just enough to bug you, but not enough to really. Yeah. Oh man. The show. It's not even animals or shapes. He just he just does the thing where you let out a balloon so it sounds like it's farting, and that's his set. <laughs> like a comedy. <laughs> yeah. Man. I'll, I've got to have to look into this. I'm sure some people in Austin know who this is. I've never heard of him. I feel like I missed out. I feel balloon like people are, people are missing out in general now because it's not there, there's too many like fr- there's not too many but there's so many like friendly places to do comedy where I remember it's like if you want to do comedy you had to go hang out at a club and everybody hung out there no matter what your brand of comedy was and so you didn't you don't get to see the like people that's they're not they're not insane the way that like people in Brooklyn open mics are insane like this lady that like was like hi it's my two minutes i'm gonna show you all my episiotomy scar and that just happened and we're like oh cool you're completely <laughs> nude on stage um not great material either uh do that. Really? Do that, yeah. yeah that was at the pit it was the funniest and it looks so weird because the pit if you've ever been to the where they used to do the mics at the pit it's it's fully like stadium it's like coliseum seating it's thin but they're re- you know you graduated seats and it really just felt like we were at some weird like Rome, like surgical theater. Yeah, yeah, that's what it felt like. It's, it's like, like from hell. You're in an episode of the Nick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, somebody's gonna drop a junior mint and be like, "Oh no!" Like it was that, but yeah. See, I, oh, sorry. I was no, just. Saying, I just go ahead. My my favorite. I've probably told you guys this story. Before. My favorite guy ever was the guy who used to perform, and there was a lottery based open mic at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase, which is a great club in Ann Arbor. And I think he was friends with the owner. So he, despite it being a lottery, he went up every week at the Comedy Jam with two M's. And <laughs> it was, uh, it was, uh, he'd go up and they're, they're open mic spot. So I think, I mean, it wasn't like a new, it was probably five minutes or something. And despite it being five minutes and obviously no one else at this open mic having walk on music, he would always come on stage to ACDC's Back in Black. <laughs> <laughs> nobody else did that so it would just be like a comedy show and then all of a sudden back in black would start playing that and he'd rules. walk on stage and, and stalk the stage chris rock style chewing on a straw and then oh. once back in black <laughs> cut out he'd be like so how's everybody doing like, <laughs> what is going it was i love that guy i miss him i hope he's all right there's something like that when you see them the second you see them happening in a, in a live comedy club you know that they practice this in their room 1,000 times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In that scenario, it was the perfect, it was, he got the idea that he needed to bring his own intro music. Like, yeah. that's so fantastical of how it, act, the, the idea of how it actually works versus reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Memorex CDR. <laughs> yeah. Memorex <laughs> CDR with a, a back in black, you know, cut intro mix on it and nothing else. Yeah. Jeez. What were you saying? I feel like I've had a a different experience of like, I think New York comedy is like less weird in a way that makes me very sad uh, compared to like when I started in Austin. Because in New York, like the weirdos get driven out a lot quicker because it's so tough. And so, like, I remember I tweeted this once because I was just like, I was like, I don't want to do comedy in a place where everyone knows what NACA is. Like, that. so true like because it's good because everyone's trying and so it's competitive and you meet more people who are sort of like-minded but like you don't see just like pure weirdos as much whereas like open mics in austin because like most people who were doing it there were not doing it seriously they were doing it just for fun or just to try something or some of them just because they were like i have an unspecified need to be listened to i don't care about comedy I just found this, like, thing that peop- I-, I can hold a captive audience. So it was, like, there was, like, this dude who would get up and um, he was, like, this homeless guy who would just play a keyboard. Like, he would just come up and play his songs that were, like, sort of funny, I guess. Like, we had one of, we had him, we had, like, a bunch of people that were just, like, like, couldn't even really form coherent sentences, but were fascinating and were very nice. And so they- it was just, like, a nice way to break up people actually trying, because... People yeah. trying and not being very good at it is like, it's a very important step of comedy, and like we've all been there, but it's not that fun to watch. I'd also, 
sure. I've watched some someone trying and being bad a million times over most of what I feel like is now, which is people not trying and basically like hanging out with their friends from stage at mics. And I'm just like, why am I here? <laughs> why am I st- standing here for three hours to hear you hang out with your friend in the back of the room on a microphone? <laughs> well, these, but, these days, this is like a total old person thing to say. But to me, the change came when everyone could watch it online. So instead of like having to go to clubs at night and fit in and stand near the bar and like kind of slowly, you know, chisel your way into the scene, everyone just from home became these like armchair quarterbacks of like calling people hacks and (laughs) people's sets and stuff, having never written a thing or stood on stage themselves. So now it's all these, like these experts, these people that are like almost mathematical about it, as opposed to, yeah, when I started, no one ever thought they were going to make money off of it. It was completely like a narcissistic explosion personality issue. And it is (laughs) interesting that way. I think when you're just kind of, a, a little bit out of control and you have to talk about yourself yeah. all the time. It was a nice, it was a nice barrier to the, like doing it during a point where if someone was like, mm-hmm. if you told someone you did stand up, they weren't excited about it. They didn't think it was cool. <laughs> they were like, Oh, like where? And you'd be like, hey, there's clubs. Hey, you don't know them. <laughs> Instead of yeah. being like, were you at, and then everybody knows everything weird, you know, like I, I feel like it would be like, you could tell some finance guy or something like that you'd think would never be into stand up at all. And nowadays, I mean, the show's not around, but it would have been like, he'd be like, yeah, I go to big terrific every week. And it's like, what, why are you there? Well, I didn't expect this, <laughs> but, um, that's, so, yeah, John, we, we've, we've done a lot of bitter. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, d- uh, John Cullen, who is, a uh, uh, very funny comedian who is co-host of a, a block party with Stefan Hack. He, he posted a really funny thing. I thought that was like, the worst thing about the quarantine, not the worst thing, but a bad thing about the quarantine in comedy is uh, that the people who like are bad and we're going to figure it out have now uh, now have a lot of time to like think they're still good and will continue doing comedy like after this. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then everyone's some, stuck in a holding pattern. And then somebody else said something like, oh, yeah, man, well, think about all the new people who are like, well, life's short, got to get out there, who are going to jump in after this, who are just going to be. It's like, there's too many already. Knock it off. I just think it's so funny. Like, all right, we're free. First weekend back from quarantine. Time to go to a bar and try comedy. And everyone, like, just stone-faced. Oh, this was a mistake. Okay, I have to get <laughs> yeah. out of here. Can you imagine going to it? Fir- it's the first day of quarantine. The, 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 the bit, it's been lifted. You're allowed to go out and mix and mingle as you please. And you walk into a bar and there's an ambush comedy show. An ambush open mic. <laughs> I would lose like my they, mind. They already had it set up. They're like coordinating it. <laughs> yeah, because they had they had a weekly show before, and then the, it just happens to be a Sunday, and they're like, "Well, it's Sunday," and the bar owner's like, "And that's the last not. bar that's still open in New York. It's the last remaining bar." And you showed up just to have like your first meal out in public, and you have a whole other plan. Yeah. I like those because when I that would happen to me, I'd be at a place and then a stand up show would start. I would always feel like I had some I was part of one of the people who planned it. I'd always be like, Oh fuck, why did we do this? And it's like <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to do with that show. Like all these people are so mad and I would always feel like partially yeah. responsible. You get off stage and you go up to the host. You're like, guys, we should rethink this. this I can never, I can, some people can do that and ha- and can separate enough to be like, actually he- like people who are heckling by which I mean having dinner at their restaurant <laughs> they're at. <laughs> and like, and then there's some comics who, who could be like, Hey, I'm trying to do a show here, but I, I could never, I felt so bad. I'd always be like, you know, like I get that. Like, can you turn the mic down? I don't, it's like, it just always felt bad. Just getting um, mad at the audience for like having conversations with their loved ones at a meal. Yeah. Can you please? I, I, this is really. I have a lot of things I need to say up here. Okay. Can we please? Yeah. yeah. I feel like not a essential business. Just the yeah. most. Not. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm like chid because I saw that video that was going around of like a some comedy club where a guy like threw a stool at the comic, and like the, I feel like the older I get, the more I'm like I used to be like, you, what is wrong? And then I'm like. I could see it. I'm like, I have like, I could think of a couple people I would probably throw a stool at. I'd love to. If they were interrupting my night. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's much comedy ranting and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, but, uh, we, we do, I don't know if the, the, the we, we've informed you that we do some wild and crazy news stories that we cover uh, here. 
Let's hear uh, it. Let's let's yeah. go. Do we have? I, we, I can't prefer- remember who was first. It's yeah, me. neither can I. It's, it's Patty. Patty. I wrote Luckily. it down. All right, so number three, or yeah, we're still doing three, two, one, right? Yeah, number three, whatever. Yeah. Uh, let's go wild. No rules. This is um, this is a very uh. Okay, it's just, I'm just going to say it's a very French headline from CNN. Uh, <laughs> Frenchman rescued from mountains after breaking quarantine to buy cigarettes. So, um, <laughs> uh, I'm just picturing a guy in a black and white horizontally striped shirt, um, purple mm-hmm. beret, long cigarette, but he doesn't have the holder, but not the cigarette itself. Um, yeah. Maybe an armful of baguettes or whatever, and uh, he realizes... Yeah. You know, I need cigarettes, and then uh, decides to uh, go up in the mountains. Um, He's for sure riding a bike. Yeah, like that I know. I assume he put the bike down when he got up in the mountains. Um, you know, and, and didn't take it with him, but it's hard to say. Um, well, you carry it up when you climb, so that you can ride back. it down. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he he um, again, there's a stay at home order. Uh, so this is a, you know this, this is not you know uh, I, I i've never been a smoker so i don't know how uh, bad it is to not be able to smoke all of a sudden i imagine it's unpleasant but um he uh pretty much immediately got lost i guess um <laughs> he so attempted this was like a trek he wasn't like going around the corner for cigarettes yeah, yeah so he, he, he here's the here's the he, here's the timeline it, what what's the explanation that he's like i need cigarettes now we climb that mountain. Yeah. Yes. So, so I can't here it imagine is. So, cigarettes are not available in France. So he, uh, the, ma- the man initially set off from the city of Perpignan, I guess is how it's pronounced, by car, found his way blocked by police checkpoints, so he attempted to cross the border to La Fiancara <laughs> on foot. So he's, he's going to Spain? Oh, I shit. guess. Uh, <laughs> what is a French yeah. coyote? What's he's, the- he's trying to go to Spain to get cigs, and uh, he got lost on the slopes fell into a stream and some brambles <laughs> and ended up calling for help. So uh, uh, his name was Brer Rabbit. Boy, Just a nicotine addicted Brer Rabbit. Boy is my face red. Huh? My face is rouge or I don't, I don't know, is that right? Um he uh yeah, so that's you know, um one of those things where you're just kind of like, "Hey, can you guys come uh, rescue me in a helicopter?" Uh, <laughs> Can you bring cigarettes? Yeah, do you yeah. Does anyone have cigarettes? We could really just kill two birds with one stone here. Look, having having an addiction to nicotine myself, I can a hundred percent see him in the helicopter. Like after enough kind of time has gone gone by, being like, "Any of you guys smoke? Like, do you, can I bomb the like just the pilot? I don't know." We just stop on the way back, and just really quick, just to make it worth it. Yeah, hanging off a long rope ladder, leaning into like a Seven Eleven or something. Well, yeah, he's like, look, I'm not, I'm obviously not going to go out again. Like, I might as well make this trip count. Yeah. Like, this is it. This is the last time I'm going to be able to go out. Can we it's like, please? He's like Gosling and Drive, just like, like zooming around corners. Like that song <laughs> TikTok is playing or whatever it's called. And it's just like <laughs> trying to avoid police checkpoints to get to blast some cigs. Are stores even open? I don't yeah. even, like, you know, that's what I don't even understand. I, w- you know. I will say the song from Drive is definitely not Kesha's TikTok, but I wish it was. That no, it's called it. Tick of the Clock. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. yeah. I thought it was the uh, Human Bean song. Um, um, but I also think maybe maybe this is all part of his plan, because that here's the plan. If you don't have any cigarettes, go commit a very small crime. And then once you're in the interrogation room, of course, the grizzled detective will offer you a cigarette from his soft pack of unfiltered cigarettes that he carries around at all yeah, times. Yeah, why do they why do detectives always have a soft pack of cigarettes? <laughs> In case they oh, have to God. tackle somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Every French detective is that guy uh, the cop from the transporter with Jason Statham, uh <laughs> the the exhausted uh sort of about to retire guy. That's yeah. that's who he's dealing with. They have two officers. It's that guy and then also uh the Pink Panther guy. What's his <laughs> name? Inspector Clouseau. Clouseau. Yeah, Clouseau. <laughs> Clouseau choppered in to try to uh, help this guy, and he and the helicopter crashed, um, but no yeah. one was hurt, of course. Did they ever? Um, was that ever a plotline in the Pink Panthers where he has to do like a hostage negotiation? I guess that's not a funny thing to go horribly <laughs> wrong. I think that was dark. a Mr. Bean episode you're thinking of. I was just gonna say, do is is Inspector Clouseau like the French Mr. Bean? <laughs> he's very cl- he's very clumsy. Clouseau was first. Yeah, yeah Mister Bean is the British Clouseau. Every yeah. every culture must have their lovable buffoon who screws things up. I feel like ours we have like we have like Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. I guess I don't know who's come since then. Mister Magoo. 
Mr. Magoo. Uh, although he never really screwed anything up. He got uh, away with he he really yeah. he should have been dead a million times. He, he really <laughs> Wiggum? Wiggum from the Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Steve O, I guess, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah. So. laughs> <laughs> America's Mr. Bean is Steve O. That would make sense because it's like Steve Steve slightly Steve-o. violent and gross. Yeah. Well, I was trademarks. thinking maybe they tried to make Inspector Clouseau in Britain, but they couldn't make him a cop anymore because the the it hides all the expression. They're big bobby hats, so like mm. it wasn't as funny. So they had to just make it Mr. Bean. And then I'm not going to bring it up again because, as the listeners know, we've talked about it too many times. But Karen, you've never heard that. It is always kind of weird to me that they made the movie Rat Race and then they just put Mr. Bean in it, but he's not called Mr. Bean. It is <laughs> a character. Yeah, he's like it's Rowan Atkinson and he doesn't speak and he's very clumsy, but it's definitely not Mr. Bean. Don't they ask that. The right. They could not get the clearance. So they yeah. Yeah, does anyone does anyone actually call Mr. Bean Mr. Bean? Like, hello, Mr. Bean. Like, is that like, does that happen? <laughs> He's like uh, the doctor in Doctor Who. It's like, no, his name is not Mr. Bean. That's the name of the show. <laughs> it's like Doctor Who in that there have been many Mr. Beans throughout history. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine like regeneration episodes? Like, the, yeah. like who's next is Mr. Bean? Oh my god! And the internet is clamoring. When will there finally be a female Mr. Bean? A Mrs. Bean? <laughs> <laughs> just get peter capaldi in there as mr bean that would be good for a season yeah like, he looks so angry all the time he's not really uh mugging as much it's like well yeah people got so angry when they announced that idris elbow is going to be the new mr bean <laughs> so, <laughs> see, mr bean is actually very sad because everyone on his home planet died all of the bean lords <laughs> he's the final bean lord uh, so awkward. <laughs> yeah uh so this guy he, he seems like he's fine um he was fined uh, 135 euros. Uh, that's 160, 146 dollars. I guess he didn't have to pay for the chopper or whatever. I don't know. I feel like here he would have <laughs> had his head cut off or something. Um, yeah. But um, not too bad, you know. Like I mean, if you get he, apparently in the city, like here in New York, it's like a thousand bucks they can give you up to for breaking quarantine. Um. Oh really? 135 wow. euros, not too bad considering they had to send. They're not going to send a chopper uh here in here in the in New York. So um. Yeah. All in all, pretty good deal, I guess. Um, I mean, this is also a country where people take Ubers to the hospital. So, yeah, it's not probably not a super cheap chopper ride to come get you from the mountains, the also, Appalachians. I, I want to say that the, sto- like the, the story here, it is CNN.com. Like, I had to double check, though, when I clicked the link because the name of the reporter, the byline is Jack Guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, is this a fake uh, site? or? No, no. Uh, but no, it appears to be real. Yeah. So thank you to Jack Guy for his, uh, his shoe leather reporting on this. It's like Jack Guy here from the News Times with a question. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the weirdest thing about this to me is the idea that you you cannot get cigarettes in France. Like yeah. that he wasn't able to you would think that would be an essential trip to the yeah. French. Well like if they're gonna have the if they're gonna have those care packages, we talked about a guy on the regular episode in Nairobi, they put Hennessy in everyone's little care packages. Um in France there's gotta be just a pack of cigs in there, right? I mean, you know, come on. Yeah. They there's need and then there's a woman to cheat on your wife with. The <laughs> yeah. It's perfect for the French. Yeah, the care packages, they all come and they say, like, op- do not open in front of your wife. And then there's, like, a smaller one that you can show your wife. The yeah, a smaller wife. wife. <laughs> yeah. Baguette one. And then save the other one. Yeah, you get yeah. a wheel of brie and a baguette for your wife. And then you get a secret... <laughs> and then a paramour. It includes a paramour. Yeah, it's been really rough that they have to cheat on their wife inside their apartment all the time uh, now. Not easy, but worth yeah. it. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's what it's all fun. about. Kind it's, of fun. It's, it's, it's someone else's culture, and we don't we don't get to judge. You know, that's what it comes <laughs> down to. We should not. We're gonna get so uh, many angry French tweets. My God, do we yeah. think anyone who's French is listening to this? I, I, don't, I don't even know. Maybe that's Absolute. fine. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We have, what's our one? Out. What's our it's one like, weird? Uh, big listenership, like Panama. Panama. <laughs> Panama loves us. <laughs> we have like an inexplicable number of listeners in Panama, according to our Spotify chart. Yeah, we get this email every week from Chartable that's like Panama's looking good again. <laughs> that's probably because we talked about canals so much early on. Yeah. What? We talked about canals. We, we discussed man's plans and canals a lot. So <laughs> our Panama that. listenership spiked. <laughs> Also, those hats. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
sure. the Panama hat. I, I always felt like that was fun, like to find out that you just are really hitting a, a real chord with just like a group of people you would not have expected for whatever reason. Like, it's a fun little geographic, you know. You're just like, does, wow. Does my okay. favorite murder have like a, a specific demo that would surprise people? We do very well in Texas, not to continually bring up Texas, which it seems like I keep doing, but <laughs> purely. I love it. Um, it's that it's my favorite murder in balloon comics. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going there to destroy all balloon comedy. Um, With a needle. Yeah, that surprised me. Just be, I, but I think it's because it's a huge place, obviously, and apparently there's just like a a real, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A shit ton of people who are into <laughs> true crime. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, you know that. And then there's like, there are definitely people, but I can't say there's like large concentrations, but we have found people writing in and being like, I'm in Antarctica or wherever <laughs> shit where you're like, oh my God, that's awesome. Yeah. But not a ton, no, nothing besides the Texas one just stood out to me. Cause I would think we're very foul mouthed and we kind of talk a lot of shit. And I would think that they, I don't know, I'm definitely wrong about it, but I would think they would be a little more conservative or proper or more offended by that but apparently i'm completely wrong have you considered the possibility that it is a huge number of off-duty sheriffs opening <laughs> a cold case it's <laughs> the Rangers. with all their cold cases <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it's just the guy from the outsider it's millions of him yeah uh doing that yeah, I, I would think it's or it's like what are the because there's a cute couple hotbed states that like like isn't it Wisconsin that's like just pumping out serial killers or it was for a long yeah. time? Yeah, they do yeah. good. They do good with murderers in Wisconsin. Obviously, Pacific Northwest is yes, good. yes, yes. Or serious specific serial killing, not like murder, gun violence, whatever. Um, yeah, I think Wisconsin, uh, Pacific Northwest. Is there another one I'm forgetting? Somewhere I feel like there are a ton from where you're from. Uh, Sacramento seems to have like tons oh, of right. them. So, so many and gross, like really, <laughs> really fucked up ones. Yeah, like the, toy the wild ones, there, which like it's yeah. There's people. Yeah. They oh, they always dig some kind of a basement that shouldn't actually be there. It's dark. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the ones. Is the toy box one? There, there's a couple that are like, if you read about them, they are like, you can listen to the murder. And it's like, yeah. Uh, I think it was stay <laughs> on <pass>. Wikipedia. <laughs> Shelby has also informed me that we have less than one percent French listeners, so we're safe. <laughs> we're safe. <laughs> we're not popular there. <laughs> um, you are that? Ah, fuck you. Yeah, I always, I always enjoyed the ones that were like, uh, like I'm sure you get asked on pretty much every guest thing. It's like, who's your favorite? Which is a weird question. It's like, I always love the ones that just they have a reason for what they're doing but it's just based in it like it's it, for me it's always like richard trenton chase where it's just like he's like like someone very matter of factly being like my organs are shrinking and i must consume blood in order to keep them big and it's like yeah. all right like you what are you not going to say to you that's going to convince you not to kill people if that's your starting your your, your base <laughs> belief yeah, you can't argue that like your your coca-cola rabbit blood blended up smoothie is <laughs> not actually going to make your heart um not concave anymore whatever the fuck like yeah that's yeah. all that's like the mental that's kind of what i'm in it for is not the like just like mafia killers what are people that are just sociopaths and don't have consciences yeah. but like people who have you know there was that guy in santa cruz and he thought he was keeping the big one the big earthquake in california from happening by just shooting people on the street Do you, i yeah. i come to one like two years ago but that one's fascinating because he it's just like, where the fuck are you getting this? And how are you not asking one other person if they think it's a good idea? Yeah, yeah run it by somebody. <laughs> yeah. Run it by anybody. They're like, I think like people's feet are like making earthquakes. Maybe if we had less people walking around. I don't know. Is that like... <laughs> Yeah. Is that anything? Yeah. Yeah, like they're like the, the flat earthers of murderers where it's like... <laughs> It's like the difficulty of trying to convince someone the earth isn't flat, but also they're going to kill people if you don't convince them the earth isn't flat. And it's just like, you know what? Go to jail, I guess. I like, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, should we so yeah, jump to friend- the next? Is it me or is it, uh, or do you have something? No, I was going to say this French guy, uh, I guess he's back at home now, probably fiending really hard for a cigarette. Um, so it's only a matter of time before he strikes again, by which I mean <laughs> falls into another set yeah. of brambles or whatever. So. French people they are- should do – did you guys see that, like, 
thing online. It was like an old woman who had the sign that said like I need beer and then the next day a bunch of people brought her like cases and cases of Coors Light. Oh nice. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Someone should do that for this guy. Just Yeah. Drop off some cartons of cigarettes for cartons him. of yeah. cartons of the worst cigarettes. <laughs> the yeah, soft they, packs. They set up like a shrine, even though he's still alive. Just his picture with a lot of cigarettes lit in front of it, like incense. You it's know? a the picture way- of him falling into the brambles on the shrine. Yeah, I don't think he knows about vaping. If that, if that's even part of his world, I feel like, like you get fa- you get punched for vaping in France. They'd yeah. be like, <laughs> yeah. it's like They're drinking. It. It's like drinking Pepsi in Atlanta. You know. It's like people are like mad. They're like, this is where cigarettes are. This, we're a cigarette town. We're not a vape town. <laughs> I know that I can tell you the vape stores are open as a, as an essential business. Uh, uh, at least the one near me is maybe they're not supposed to be open, but they're still in there and people are still hanging out in there. Hanging out in there. Just talking about vape stuff. Like, what's yeah. The, well, yeah. vape stuff and other stuff that I don't engage in. Cause it sounds incriminating. I think sure. they got stuff going on. Illicit um, stuff. Yeah, the the store next to them got shut down by the financial for some sort of fiduciary crime, and then I asked the guy in the vape store, I was like, "What happened?" And he was just like, "Bunch of bullshit, man." And then I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was like, "Do you have jewel pods? <laughs> <laughs> Menthol, please." Uh, yeah, but I, that was I was telling somebody that's when I knew that New York was starting to take the coronavirus seriously. Was when um, because you're you lived in New York, right, Karen? Very briefly. From, for like, very briefly. Oh, okay. A year, yeah. Uh, was when the guys who sit in lawn chairs outside of the corner stores were wearing masks while they shouted at people, just like the old hip hop heads with like black leather baseball caps and open sandals, just camping out in masks. But yeah, you know, cigarettes essential. (laughs) French essentials. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, You get a subscription cigarette box every month, (laughs) (laughs) different brands. (laughs) Am I number two? You are yeah. next, Eli. Ah, uh, I had a hunch. That's why I, I asked. Oh, I have to disable. This is now. This is a big part of our podcast: is disabling ad blockers when we go to news sites. <laughs> well, because we're a... usually going to like the least reputable news sites oh, possible. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like nine million ad ad pop ups and shit. Yeah, this one's a little funny. It will give you a hint towards the story. <laughs> this but this story a little is... funny. It's well, no. Good... The, so <laughs> this story. No, the actual uh, the actual pop up is. So this is, it'll give you a hint towards sort of what it is. This is from PCGamer.com. But um, so PC Gamer, for a while, there's this game called The Witcher. And there's like a scene in that game where the main character. I'm assuming this is a website for politically correct gamers, right? That's right. Well, that's sort of what happens. Like, so this game, The Witcher, <laughs> yeah, politicallycorrectgamer.com. Uh, there's zero viewers. Nobody likes it. <laughs> uh, no audience. Yeah. SJWGamer.com has also been. <laughs> Um, so in this game, The Witcher, there's like a, a, a cutscene where the main male character of the game, Geralt, we all know, uh, he takes a bath and it's like shot from like down at his feet. So you see him in the bath relaxing nude with his feet up and PC Gamer used this photo in an article about The Witcher and like because gamers are so many of them are awful, like people were like mad because they were like, don't. It was like old school gay panic middle school shit with like, don't show me this fucking nude guy. I'm not trying to look at, oh, I'm not trying to look at men. What? Get this out of here. And so <laughs> as a response. He's not real? Did they know he's not a real person? That, to him, he's very real to them. And, yeah. and he's, he's stirring up feelings that they don't want to confront. So of this ripped, you know, witcher in a bat in an old school wooden tub. He does um, look like. I, well, I don't know what he looks like in the video game, but uh, Superman plays him in the TV show, and he has a beautiful white blonde, like Legolas <laughs> wig. <laughs> you watch the show? I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I, I watched it too. No, Karen, you shouldn't be embarrassed. I recommended you, it on yeah. this podcast for like quarantine stuff, where I was like, it's dumb and bad, but it's also great. It's like the old Kevin Sorbo Hercules. It's like yeah. a silly. But uh, it's Cavill, who is actually kind of perfectly put together. Yeah. yeah. He really is. He's like our Kate Upton for, Kate Upton for <laughs> girls. Yeah. yeah. Henry Cavill, where he has like an amazing butt and an amazing face. And he's kind of like not totally there. So he doesn't get in the way. You can yeah. just completely objectify him and then be like, what's a witcher? Like, I <laughs> have no idea it was based on a game, uh, a video game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Henry Cable is, he's just kind of, yeah, he's like built from clay. He's sort of just got that. 
And you, you know? can project whatever you want on him because he's like a total blank slate of a person. Yeah. yeah um, he, and or is he American or is he Canadian? Like he could be. <laughs> I, you could tell me any of them or French, and I would have no idea. Yeah. Like if he got cut and didn't bleed, I wouldn't be that surprised. I'd be like, "Oh, you just don't have blood, huh?" And he's like, "Nope, just muscle." It's like <laughs> it's like one of those bodies exhibits. That first Superman movie he did, where no one knew who he was, he was kind of like this unknown. There was that scene where he came out of the ocean. Do you remember that scene? It was no. like, and it was I missed Superman like, tracking him with his shirt open, soaking wet, walking out of like the sea. And I, whoever I saw that movie with, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, I, <laughs> what is happening? This is amazing. Going, like, going through what's known as puberty too. Uh, <laughs> Henry it's Cavill back. You ready too? Just like a screaming crush. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so just whoever you saw the movie was like, "Hey, did you just uh, silently catch your breath?" It felt like you did that <laughs> next to me. <gasps> yeah. He does. He's. He's. I mean, he looks. He does feel like there's no pictures of him as a kid. Like you couldn't find any because he just appeared one day. They were like, we need Superman. And he was like, hello. And he's strange. Yeah, he has like an unplaceable. He, he's British, but like maybe not. And um, like, isn't the he whole like thing, also a, a like a true nerd? Like he did The Witcher because yeah, he, he loves The Witcher. Yeah, he loves The Witcher. And he does. It's it's like I was going to say, do not be embarrassed for watching The Witcher because you're in a you are recording a podcast with someone who watched The Witcher and didn't like it because it didn't follow the video game. So it's way worse. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, he's doing the funny thing is he, the guy in the video game, the Witcher, he has he has a very like he just has that video game protagonist voice of he's like, I heard you had a ghoul or whatever. <laughs> and Henry Cavill copied that exactly like he's doing that voice in the TV show. But he's like, I don't he, do, he doesn't look that like I said, because it looks like he doesn't bleed. It's like impossible to make Henry Cavill look like roughed up. He never looks roughed up. Yeah, and most he always got, looks like, clean even if he's dirty. Yeah, well, like, everything is just he's like got a lot of plastic surgery, so yeah. that never looks rough. I mean, it oh, the smoothness. He's like more <laughs> elven than anything else because he's like perfectly. Yeah, it's he's like very someone elven. Was a ruler and was like, no, this eye goes over here a little further. So yeah. I did find a picture of him, and he 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 had like a Jerry O'Connell thing, where like Jerry O'Connell and Stand by Me is kind of like a little chip monkey looking guy, you know. Oh, but then yeah. he got like really oh, yeah. yeah. What? You mean yeah. Cavill, Cable? I'm, I'm probably pretty yeah, sure. yeah. I, I just I sent it to the uh, the chat on the Zoom thing, but but it's like he had like a he's kind of like chubby and has like a uh, I don't know he look he looks like he looks a lot like Jerry O'Connell as a kid weirdly, um, but uh, <laughs> then he got really hot and jacked. So yeah, <laughs> what was the story originally about? I can't even remember. Oh yeah, I didn't even get there. Yeah, <laughs> Video games. I was just gonna say that he looks like one of the guys in an Instagram ad for like a jaw strengthener. That's like chew on this plastic to strengthen your jaw. <laughs> like he's that guy. Yeah, he's he's definitely one that like incels probably post a lot as like having like a the Chad. right bones or whatever as a yeah, Chad. Yeah, the, the alpha Chad, the the omega. Like uh, I'm thinking of vampires now. I gotta get that. I gotta get this story. Uh, <laughs> that's a note for me, not for anybody else. So this is from PC Gamer. It's it's um. Oh yeah, uh, it's, that's right. We were talking about a totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this is a, a new game that everyone's a flutter about. Uh, finally, this will be available. Um, the new game, I, I assume, Karen, you're going to be pre-ordering this if you haven't already. Uh, Pope Simulator. Pope? Pope. P-O-P-E. Yes. <laughs> Head of Papal. the Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> Not how to have hope in times that are this dark. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Somebody, how to become the Pope. Somebody you ever wondered about the day-to-day of the Vicar of Christ here on Earth? <laughs> uh, that's... That's how Here I it is. Yeah. <laughs> set set in beautiful Vatican City. Uh, it's not part. So yeah, it, it promises a realistic depiction of life as the Supreme Pontiff. Uh <laughs> the game <laughs> the game begins, of course, on Conclave Day. What? When the College of Cardinals elects a new pope. That's you. <laughs> so, do you get yeah, to I create your? Do you get to create your like what you look like as the Pope? Is it like a create a wrestler like thing? Oh, character popes? creator. Yeah, yeah. Got to set your nose depth, your like jaw angle. Like, I'm eight feet pope. tall. I'm giant, uh, and I'm the Pope. That's <laughs> why I won. Really strong. I would play it for that. I would like it if they had a character creator, but you could only create old Italian men. It was just all <laughs> different old Italian men. 
<laughs> right or the left? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like different old Italian sliders, you know? <laughs> they all just have Italian names. <laughs> like, I don't know, what, what's like the, whatever the Italian version of like chutzpah is, there's like a chutzpah slider that's just mm-hmm. like amount of wisdom crow's feet maximum there's a there's a spritzatura slider for your uh, your fashion choices you know yeah uh you have to wonder if at any point during pope simulator is does the 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 uh, scene from euro trip happen where someone wanders into your office <laughs> and sets fire <laughs> to your stuff my um, my sister can i just please give credit my sister Laura has been telling me to watch the movie Euro Trip for literally 20 years or whenever it came out. And I'm always like, stop it. You're out of your mind. And she's like, it is so funny. You have to watch it. And she's uh, she's obsessed. It's like now an inside joke between my sister and I. And that the, you can never watch it because it'll ruin like, the joke? It's like, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I act like I'm against it. But the idea that you just so casually said it's like that scene in Euro Trip. <laughs> well, this is again like the probably the only podcast that regularly references things that happen in Euro Trip. A lot. It's Euro- actually good. Your sister yeah, right. loves it's it. Good. <laughs> it's kind of a cultural touchstone for like the people that were watching. You know, like the Vault on Comedy Central. It was always on there. It's literally like we've talked about this before, but it's like there is a, a very specific demographic, and it's like thirty-six-year-old white men. <laughs> Who yeah. were exactly the right like age and demo to appreciate Euro Trip at the yeah. time? I was it's, like a junior in college the year that people go abroad uh, when Euro Trip came out, and it's like this is it. This is exactly right. This is what I want to see. <laughs> is the plot of Euro Trip? Is that I don't remember why they're going to Euro Europe. Like, is it the? It's not the one where they accidentally send a sex tape through like certified mail and have to go save it, right? That's road trip. That's road trip. Euro trip is just like his girlfriend moved to Europe and he's like trying to get her back. So then no, they he, he has a pen, their way through. He, he has a pen pal um, <laughs> named, named Mika. And the big twist is it ends up being a girl and a hot girl, obviously, because he thought it was Mike, but she's German. So it's Mika. Her name is Mika, I guess. It's like a, you know, Wait, so it doesn't he matter. Was, but anyway, he was gay um, and thought he was going to find uh, but what? He, He's no. He, he, he like, thought want, it he, was like his pal. His he wants to go like Mike. meet his pen pal. I, I is what I is what I vaguely remember. Oh. I don't remember the. I don't remember the actual why they went. But oh, um, I think Mika sends a picture and he's like, "Whoa, you's a hot lady!" And then they get a ticket to maybe ticket to know. Europe. Do We're going to Europe. Euro ticket for exist Europe. Exist in the same universe. Probably. Um, it's not. It's possible. There's no overlap that makes it not possible. It's not like there's the same actor that plays a different yeah. character in it. So. All these but movies, I didn't know if they were of the same <clears throat> series or not. That's All true. A lot movies, of movies, though. It's like, well, you know, there's no clear contradiction. So the Matrix takes place in the same universe as A Christmas Story. Yeah. Um, let's Have see. Have you what ever else, seen? Uh, somebody did a chart once of like all of the. I think they based it on um, the Richard Belzer because he's played that cop in like nine million things like that was sort of the ground zero of it the but they made hmm? the belzerverse the yeah and it's like a chart of like it uh, obviously so it's like anything he's been in as that cop exists in the same universe but then anybody who did a crossover from those shows onto other shows that also means that those shows are in the same universe so it basically comes out that like 90% of American media is in the Belzerverse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to find it. It's really fascinating. It's like well, you can connect everything. There's weird ones. Like how Mork was on Happy Days, you know? So it's like Mork and Mindy is in the same universe as Happy Days, you know? Yeah. Stuff like that. That's and then that also means the aliens just, exist? It was a spinoff. Mork showed up on... This was like late like near the jump the shark era of happy days where it was almost over and they had a sh- an alien appear and then it was so popular and robin williams was did such a great job that they gave him a spinoff and that's oh, so that was oh so th- okay i th- see I, th- oh. I thought like they already had the mork and mindy plan and they used it as like a backdoor no this was like just like oh people love this alien yeah <laughs> That's wow. deranged. Yeah. I like I like when the Harlem Globetrotters were in Scooby Doo. <laughs> that was my favorite crossover because that implies that like if in any normal Scooby Doo episode, if someone had walked up to like Fred and Shaggy and been like, "You guys know the Harlem Globetrotters?" They'd be like, "Yeah, the basketball guys. Like, <laughs> we live in that universe. Like, uh, they're here." Sure. Um, <laughs> the Harlem Globetrotters were trying to drive down the price um, on a 
amusement park they wanted to buy. And so they were all very tall ghosts that were trying to. That's what I assume <laughs> yeah. the plot was. That's always the plot. Yeah. I'm going to make a million dollars as long as no one spins a basketball near me for a while. <laughs> It'll all work out. The um, Globetrotters used to have their own cartoon um, on Saturday mornings when I was a kid. And yeah. well, I think it was um, Meadowlark Lemon. It was one of them with the biggest hair. Used to pull shit out of his afro when they needed stuff. Nice. It was amazing. Like they, you know, they'd get stuck somewhere and they'd be like, "Hold on," and then pull out a whole like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Whatever bike pump, Mary Poppins style. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, they're probably better crime solvers than the Mystery Machine crew because they're at least in good shape. They're athletic. <laughs> Like, Shaggy's just straight up high as fuck. He's not, like, actually helpful. Yeah, and they're scared of everything. Come on. Yeah. You gotta, you know, have a little heart here. I but don't then, know. I mean, the Scooby-Doo people, they can, when they run, their legs turn into wheels. So, like, they're pretty athletic, too. <laughs> That's true. I like yeah. Velma's, Velma's run where she keeps her arms real straight and flat. And she, like, yeah. no upper body motion, really. It's that was actually the original yeah. Naruto run was Velma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, that's why Shaggy and Scooby have to eat so much is because the the amount of calories turning your legs into wheels burns. It's like a very it's like a hummingbird. They have to constantly be eating and able to move that way. It's very but all, serious. You feel like in the world where the Harlem Globetrotters were famous, like how would Scooby Doo not be famous? How would there be a crime solving talking dog that <laughs> I feel like the Harlem Globetrotters would have showed up and been like, Hell yeah, Scooby Doo, we love you. Like we're fighting you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they're equally famous. They should be. Yeah, they should be followed by news vans. What is it <laughs> yeah. like, like, like the mystery machine and then like local news behind them? Yeah. Like there's there's reporters with no interest in the multiple crimes that have been solved by a talking dog. So that dog like, seems really smart. What's, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> Next it's scoop. Impediment, yeah. I think there's something up at City Hall. I'm going to focus on that. And he's so, got a nephew that walks on his hind legs, and he just straight up talks. He doesn't he even have a speech talks. impediment. He just talks normally. It's so. also weird for a dog to have a nephew. Let's give him. Yeah, let's let's give him dead parents. <laughs> Like, I technically it's possible, but it's just, like, weird to think about dog familial relationships as, like, oh, my nephew. Yeah. So oh, nephew yeah, would my have sister's to be... kid. She died. Uh, <laughs> he's coming to live with me. Father's not in the picture. So, anyway, yeah. he's on the I team. Step up. I'm a Doberman pincher. Yeah. <laughs> my, my sister got hit by a mail truck, so this is my nephew. <laughs> Scrappy-doo. <laughs> I... Uh, I used to love when they would find makings for those crazy tall sandwiches, but they'd be on like a submarine. Where you're just yeah. like, don't eat that. Where, where are you fucking with bread and lettuce? It's not safe. Yeah, fresh bread. Yeah, beautiful bread on a submarine. Yeah, it's I mean, fine because the crew's all dead, so we have all this extra food. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Isn't there, I feel like there is one where they eat like a ghost sandwich and then they get spooked, but. If not, I hope that does happen. Probably. At some point. Chances are. Are you thinking of happens. the Brood Witch from Aqua Teen? <laughs> Reboot. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, bring back bring back Scooby Doo. What was that? they well they, well they had the live action ones. Again, not a smart choice. I Matthew think. Lillard, baby. Matthew Lillard. It's <laughs> true. Him. This is uh, a Matthew Lillard respect zone. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> these tangents are part of our podcast. Do not worry. This is normal. <laughs> So this is a, this is a description of what your what your kind of day to day is is as the pope. Do you have to um, get up and go to the bathroom ten times every night because you're an old man? <laughs> yeah, your prostate game? your prostate shrinks. It's marked by a you meter. Have a, you have, yeah, you have a prostate meter for sure. <laughs> <laughs> is this like sanctioned by the church? I hope so. I, they uh, sell a lot of weird stuff if you go to like that. If, I've been to Vatican City and they sell a lot of like very insane Catholic souvenirs. So yeah. I could see this potentially being okay with them. L- listen to how threatening this sounds. This is part of the the description of what a pope does. You'll begin your reign by choosing a coat of arms, which will apparently impact the course of your pap- pap- papacy. I don't know. Uh, and from there, you'll set out to influence the course of the world through the application of soft power. It's like, good lord, this sounds very uh, conspiracy-ish. You have to admit it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like the Sim City parts where you talk to the advisors for the whole game. That's just the game, apparently. That's, yeah. I mean, this is the guy who you made it. You get those little alerts. It's like, do not smite them. You will regret them. <laughs> right, right. You can't cut funding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, here's another quote from the 
this guy doesn't seem to like the Pope there very much. The po- this is a quote from the uh, from Ultimate Games CEO Mat- Matusz Zawadzki. Uh, the Pope has no military or economic power behind him, but he has other means of influencing the world, which was evident in the 1980s. For example, when the communist system in Poland collapsed, <laughs> and this guy's name seems Polish, so I think he is mad at the Pope. Uh, our idea assumes the possibility to use, among others, the so-called soft power and consequently influence the fate of the world and interfere in international politics. All this, of course, in accordance with the vision adopted by the player. So uh, it turns it's out... Like use of in, in, or something. Yeah, use of yeah. interfere there is interesting. Uh, interfere in politics. It's like, huh, okay, well... <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I think the Pope's kind of political... I think they, The Pope has political power and economic power. He has a gold fucking throne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. It used to be... The Pope used to be, like, the power. This yeah. is the weirdest take on... I mean, maybe it's just like the current thing where he can't really make people yeah. stop doing stuff. But I don't know. I feel like the, that's the reason it exists. Does the Pope still have a scepter? Is that part of his kit? Um, I think you get a scepter. I, I don't know. I think that, if you want a scepter, you can have a scepter if you're the Pope. Can, can you bring back like the Holy Roman Empire in this game? Like, can <laughs> you like take over places? That's how like, you win. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a uh, here. Then after that kind of weird political diatribe, it goes into kind of the mechanics of Pope Simulator, which are fun. It turns out that the Pope works a lot like an old-school magic user. He has specific skills that can be developed over the course of the game and is powered through a sort of mana pool, faith, that's recovered through prayer. <laughs> okay, this is a look. Like... What? <laughs> yeah, so you build like, up... It's like, hold on, I can't I can't do this action. I have to pray for a while first to re- recharge my... Yeah, then your faith thermometer goes up and up and up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, ca- casting Cure 3 on a leper or something, but you don't have enough MP yeah. to, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can use it to bless in-game units, it says. Or you can share the strength of your faith with crowds. So, you know, there's that. Amazing. It's That's like it's like doing a, it's like doing a taunt like in a fighting game. It builds up your meter like, yeah, from, the, from the meter. balcony. Yeah. yeah, with further actions, you strengthen the faith of others, but you weaken yourself. So, so yeah, you can just... It's really real. Yeah. yeah, what faith like, zero wh- sum game? How do you win? <laughs> Someone's gonna lose. How do you win? <laughs> you die and go to heaven. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate goal. Does it mention anything about the secret Vatican City Museum that they say holds all the like mysteries of the world that the that the Catholic Church doesn't want? people to know about like the Loch Ness monster or something <laughs> yeah. it doesn't that? say but I assume that that can be purchased as DLC if you yeah, pay five ninety nine. dollars 99 yeah, or I mean, if you like do well enough it unlocks that level yeah you get the battle pass when you get that's enough like, Pope experience you can that's uh, like, unlock like Robert Ludlum level stuff like yeah. like <laughs> Jesus was actually a twin or like uh, you know stuff like that yeah, yeah no that's where they're hiding all the all the depictions of black Jesus in there <laughs> yeah. And the Loch Ness monster, and the what's the what's the fake mermaid we always talk about on the show? Oh, the monkey staple to the fish, what the Fiji mermaid. The Fiji mermaid. <laughs> yeah. They have the Fiji mermaid in there, but yeah. the real one. They also have. Dude, I'd love they to go back in time and scam people. It'd be so easy. They have Champy from Lake Champlain is also in there. He's in the same pool <laughs> yeah. as Loch Ness. It's monster. just all sea monsters. Yeah. Yeah. They all, and they all wanted to fuck manatees. And I just now I imagine all old sailors is like severely cross-eyed, just staring at a manatee, getting like real <laughs> riled up, just being like, "Oh, lo- oh lordy," <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, so the, you can be the Pope. I also like to think that there's like an equipment screen, but there, you only have. You one set scepter. of equipment yeah it's like <laughs> equipped hat Rose. the pope one no you can like you, you can you can buy like a um you can farm various equipment and then you can upgrade like you're from like a a, a wooden cross which breaks if you use it enough times and then you get like a steel cross which lasts a lot longer and then eventually you get a gold cross that doesn't break yeah. that's the they yeah. avoid the iron cross for obvious reasons <laughs> obvious reasons <laughs> yeah <laughs> Very important. Yeah, and it uh, it links up with Animal Crossing, so you can just also go to Animal Crossing Islands as the Pope. Yeah, it's not and really. You, conv- and you, and you go there and you convert the various villagers. <laughs> yeah. I just want to <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, I just. Oh, I was like a lot of missionary work. It was totally worth it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a fun game, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know, de stress after a long day of work by becoming the Pope. I think you're right. I think it's just like one guy who's like really mad at the Pope for fucking with Poland. Yeah, I, it does super seem. 
It also says it's in a very early stage of development. So okay, so this is <laughs> this is vaporware. Out. This is like Duke Nukem 3D. It's never yeah. going to come out. The Kickstarter. <laughs> that someone would be like such a weird, like what what kind of mental illness that is, where they want to like preach over huge crowds and like get people's faith up. It's really insane, yeah. like egomaniacal and <laughs> narcissistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do stand up. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what they're, 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 they're going to get mad like it was Grand Theft Auto where they're like we're raising megalomaniacs this game is going to inspire people to, to take over the Vatican Go just playing the, p- playing the Pope simulator on Oculus like on the, with the VR headset <laughs> that would you're be just sick stretching your arms out blessing people right you're on the balcony you're just, just doing this yeah. yeah put on a headset do VR. Mama Mia hands and get you know worshipped <laughs> Be great. I would play it if it were Oculus. That I feel like that's an immediate improvement to this game. Yeah, yeah. But the, there's obviously a limited edition Oculus that does have the hat, but it's like made out of plastic and metal. <laughs> it's like, like a whole thing. I can't believe it. I'm here. It's like I'm actually in the papal apartment in Vatican City. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's the real wanted. it's the real papal toilet and papal <laughs> urinal. <laughs> Oh man, he's got a urinal in there, like Shaq. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. It was like the guy that invented this game got, watched the young Pope and was like, this is going to be the new thing. People are all about the Pope now. And he yeah. like rushed to start making this game. And it's like, no one, ca- no one cares. No. The Pope yeah. is hot. <laughs> First, he called yeah. up his broker and he tried to invest in Pope and then was told that's not a business and he can't invest. <laughs> so he's like, well, the next best thing, make a game. The Pope. Yeah. I also hope that you can unlock. Like the All Star cards in Madden, where you get like you know like a Jerome Bettis card, you can unlock like the like Pope Benedict card, and he like comes and does whatever that guy did. Wasn't that guy bad? I don't know. I don't yeah, really he, covers the up, he covers up. He covers up abuse. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, that's yeah, and then he resigns from the papacy. That's that's what he does. It's yeah, not a very, not and a very now I'm just card. imagining like a magic card type game, but with saints. I I'm like so that sure that be, exists. I feel yeah, like that, that would do yeah. well because they used to have like the they used to have like the bootleg NES games that were like religious. So it was yeah. like it was like a platformer, but it was like you were Moses or what whatever. Wow! Like, so like Christian parents would yeah buy yeah. I, I had a friend who was pretty religious growing up, and uh, yeah, we he we played some at his house. They were in like the um, I think they were like official looking cards, but I don't know that they were like you could buy them at the store. I think you had to like get them through some weird, you know, some catalog. There were, yeah, there were. Uh, There's a famous one that was just a clone of the original Doom, where obviously Doom is you're running on using a gun to shoot demons. It was very bloody and violent. And then they wanted to get the the kids who couldn't play Doom because they're religious. But so it's an exact clone of Doom where you're Noah on the Ark and you have like a slingshot where you shoot food into goats' mouths. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get so sl- and then they get so full that they fall asleep. <laughs> oh, that's, See, now that's nice. Yeah. yeah, I'd play that. That's not at anyone's expense. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> a good game. I played another one too on stream at work once as a joke, and it was just like basically it was like multiple cho- choice questions where it would tell you a Bible verse, and then you had to be able to say what the verse was mm-hmm. over and over. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just because fun. of natural competitiveness, I actually got like. I was like mad when I'd forget Bible verses. So like, damn it! <laughs> Did you guys see that documentary, Jesus Camp? Oh yes. Lord, oh, so good. But in it, they play a video game that's all about how evolution is not real. Sure. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? And they're like, it's this whole thing of like t- taking apart the whole idea of dinosaurs and how fake it is. Now God buried them for scientists to discover them to throw them off the scene. <laughs> like, good it, God! I these little kids doing it, and it was like my the scariest part of the movie to me. Is that yeah. I don't remember that part. That's amazing. Yeah, I just I want a whole every every game. one of those kids from that movie is actually now a federal district judge. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep, they're living Pretty cool. a MAGA lifestyle now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is there anything you is there anything specific you want to plug, Karen, or, or just you know the show uh, in general? I'm going to be in the kitchen later, um, just getting <laughs> around. Sometimes I wave at people that are walking down the street. Um, no, there's no. I mean, just no. There's nothing. Okay. <laughs> plugs are you yeah, sure this you, is like you listen yeah. <laughs> i gotta like keep it in the it. spirit yeah. yeah i mean what what does anyone plug these days just like yeah. their continued efforts on social media <laughs> yeah yeah you have the you have an album as well is it is it live at largo live at uh it's live at the bootleg which is like a bootleg yeah yeah it was like a yeah. musical venue in la yeah i yeah. do that you can have that if you want it's it. on spotify it's very good i enjoy it 
Thanks, Kev. Hey, no problem. Hey, hey. Thanks for the go. show. Thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah, yeah thank thanks, you. Everybody. We'll uh, see you next time. Yep. Oh, wait. Bu- and wait. Uh, don't forget to vote for what accent oh, yeah. I have to do. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening. Karen, you can get brought in on this. <laughs> <laughs> As a reward for hitting 950 patrons, we uh, we thought up, we think up a lot of rewards that just kind of become locked in. Like, I think at 2,000, we now have, at 2,000 patrons, we all have to do the NFL Combine drills. <laughs> it just kind of happened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in your own homes? Like, do you yeah, and, reco- and time ourselves. Well, so we see, see, if this keeps up, we can just push it back forever. Because, well, we can't go outside yet. It's too dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so. we just want to see what round we'd go in. Um but, but yeah, uh, for this one, I have to. So I, I am terrible at accents and voices, and so mm-hmm. I have to do my own NFL combine. It, we hit the number of followers where our listeners get to pick three impressions that I have to do. <laughs> so, Michael Caine, <laughs> yeah. the Pope, obviously. Michael yeah. Caine, the Pope. These are all great ideas, <laughs> listeners. If you want them, comment on the Patreon post and then vote like the ones that you think are the best and the ones with the most votes. I will have to do on the next episode. Yeah, After that's all we'll do. It. Example, sorry, can I just hear something of how good you are, voices or accent? Just what would you I'm, consider a strong impression of oh yours? Oh my Kat? god, I'm so bad at all. I'm like, I, I'm panicking. <laughs> can like, I throw? Can I throw one out? Throw one out. I'll give it a shot. Peter Griffin. <laughs> uh okay what's peter griffin so it's like that's freaking great lois right? <laughs> that was uncanny that was un- i got it i nailed it uh look forward to more of that next week <laughs> okay let's let's end this <laughs> okay oh thanks a lot karen yeah bye. thanks karen bye bye, bye.